This is Neil Patori. I'm going to talk in this segment about block encoding and decoding and do some examples. So a block code uh, follows this flow chart that you see here. Um, really what's going on is I have some information source. You know, maybe a packet that I want to send. Um, it might be uh, sample values out of a microphone or it might be video packets that information source is going to be encoded. It's going to go through the channel and sometimes in the channel we're going to have bit flips that change the bits in our uh, receiver. Now in the channel I'm assuming that we're including a lot of things like the modulation and the additive noise of the channel as well as the demodulation and decisions made by our receiver. After all of that, the end result is going to be that we're going to flip some bits. And what we're going to receive are this data vector is not going to be the same as the bits we sent. So we're going to go through this decoding process. And as you're going to see in block coding, what happens is that I increase the data rate that has to go through the channel. I take a block of K bits for my data. And so essentially I've got an information source that may be continuous and I'd run it through a serial to parallel converter and take K bits at a time to be this data vector D. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to encode it and we'll talk about the encoder. I'm going to end up with more bits, N bits greater than K and those are going to go through the channel. I'm going to receive those N bits. And then I, out of this whole decoding operation here, I'm going to get the data bits, my estimate of the data bits. Sometimes it's called D hat because we want to say that it may not be exactly what was sent. But hopefully the errors in D hat are very few. And the goal of this block coding is to increase the dimension essentially of what is sent of the modulation that is sent by increasing k to n by sending it through our channel we're effectively being able to do a better job at the bit error rate or we're able to reduce the eb over n naught that we need in order to achieve the same probability bit error of our output okay so let's go over what the block coder does is it takes this data vector and multiplies it by a generator. And our generator matrix is specified to us. It's not something we have to determine. It would be something that is specified in the spec. In this example, I'm going to take a particular generator matrix, and this is called a 7-4 block code. A generator matrix has two parts. One is the identity matrix. So it's one, 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 and the rest zeros. And then we have the syndrome. The next part of the matrix has three columns. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the data vector by G. And this is going to be modulo 2 multiplication and addition. Okay, so let's take an example. And I'm going to set D equal to 1, 0, 1, 0. To code the data, to encode with block coding, I'm going to do D times G. That means taking this row and multiplying each column by the row, right? With matrix multiplication, I take the column, I transpose it, I put it on top of D, I um, add together the numbers, okay? Here, I have a one times a one in the first number, zero times zero, then zero times one, which is zero, and a zero times zero. So I only get a one out of these four numbers that I'm adding together. So the first value is one. The second time, I have 0, 1, 0, 0 multiplied by 1, 0, 1, 0. So all of the numbers turn out to be 0. I can go on like this. Uh, the first four, because I have an identity matrix, it's going to turn out that it's going to be the same as the data bits that I sent in. 
And I know that up front because that's the systematic part of the systematic linear block code name. The systematic means that I'm using the identity matrix as the first, uh, first K rows and columns of the generator. Okay, So the first four are going to be the same. I'll just put a little dashed line there so you know I'm keeping track um, and you know where we are. The next three are going to be this three by four matrix multiplied by this four by one vector. I'm going to have one zero one one multiplied by one zero one zero. I'm going to have the one the products are one zero one zero and the sum of all those numbers is going to be two. The answer is taken modulo two I get zero. Another way to look at this and this is the way that uh, Jeffrey Frolic does it in his videos he says well I know that my D has a 1 in the first and third position, so I only need to look at the first and third rows. So if I only look at the first and third rows and I add those numbers together, I can really quickly see that I have two ones here. It's in sums to 2, so I'll get a 0. The next one, I have a 1 plus a 0, so I'm going to get a 1. And the last one, I have two ones, so I'm going to get a 0. Okay, so this is my coded bit stream C. I send seven bits through the channel, and some of those bits get flipped. Let's see what happens first. What would happen if I make no errors in the channel? And I have R equal to C. So I get 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. For my four bits at the receiver. Well, as the flowchart says, I multiply r by s. Now s here is a, again, is given to you. It happens to be, for the systematic linear block code, I take these four, I start out the s matrix with those, And then I have three rows of the identity matrix. I fill the remainder with the identity. And I take these seven rows and I multiply by this seven by three matrix. And so my result, R times S, again, using that trick that we saw, we have three ones. They're in column one, three, and six. So I'm gonna look at one, three, and six, and I'm just gonna add up how many ones there are. If there's an even number of ones, I'm gonna get a zero. If there's an odd number of ones, I'm gonna get a one. In every case, I have an even number of ones. So the result for R times S is zero, zero, zero. When I have zero, 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 as described in this flowchart. That means I have no error. The R is correct. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the last n minus k bits. These are the last n minus k bits, in this case 7 minus 4 bits. And I'm just going to say my d hat, my estimate of the bits sent is 1010. 0, 0. And that's it. That is in fact correct, right? I sent a 1010. I received now a 1010. Okay, but you can say that's simple. You didn't make any errors. What would have happened if you had made some errors? Fair question. Let's say that instead of receiving the correct bits, I instead made an error somewhere. I said 1110. And I then multiply that by my S matrix. In this case, I've got an additional row of 0, 1, 0 that I need to add in. And my RS matrix now, or my RS product, I add together these four rows, and I see that there's two in the first column and that mod 2 is 0. 
and then I have 3 in the second position, mod 2 is 1, 1, 2, 3 in the third position, and that mod 2 is 1 again. Okay, so now I don't have 0, 0, 0. Now what I do is I look up rs in s, and I find what row it is. In this case, 0, 1, 1 is row 2, so row is equal to 2, and that tells me to flip the second bit. I go to the second bit in my R, and I flip it. So now I have 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and that is what I should have received. And then I cancel off the last three bits, and uh, minus K, and I say my estimate is d hat 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, and I can make any one single bit error, and this method will find it. So if I had made an error in the last three bits, it would have found that. But any bit error in these seven bits would still result in my d hat being 1, 0, 1, 0. More than one error would not work. I would not be able to find the correct bit sent if I made more than one bit error. But for one bit error, I was able to recover. For an additional example, I recommend that you go to Jeffrey Frolic's Muse video part six on channel coding, and he does another block coding and decoding example.